Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies and we're doing something completely new and different today. That's right, we have a very special guest coming on the show today. It's uh, Cinemassacre's James Rolfe and uh, we're going to be talking about horror and Halloween at the start of October here. We're going to touch on some topics. You did tell him to bring beer, right? Yeah, yeah, he knows. It's all part of the show's gimmick. Okay, good stuff this time, not the shit he usually drinks. The Rolling Rock stuff? Yeah. Nah, he doesn't really drink that shit. It's all part of the character. Oh, hey, guys. Hey, James. How's it going? Hey. Before we get started, uh, what are we all drinking here? Oh, me? Well, I, don't worry about it. Oh, really? Oh. It's just some American beer. Like a local beer or something? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's a lager. Huh. Pale lager. Well, that could be, like, one of a thousand beers. Like, uh, come on, what are we talking about here? Uh, well... All right. Oh, oh, rolling oh, rolling oh, for Christ's oh. sake. Yeah, I knew it. I told, didn't I tell you? Would you go get something good, please? We can't continue this unless we're all drinking some decent beers here. Well, it does happen to be empty, um, so it has been drank. Fun fact, I, I recycle the bottles a lot in nerd episodes, so I use the same ones again sometimes. Um, but I, I got something here. I mean, this is a, a, one of my favorites, uh, Wein Stefaner Hefeweizen. Oh, okay, Ooh. there we go. That... The world's oldest brewery, um, 1040. So they had a long time to, they had plenty of time to get it right. I hope so. God, for a thousand years. Like, yeah, some taste a little off still. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite nail it yet. <laughs> yeah. Where's it from? Oh, uh, Germany. Bavaria? Yeah, Bavaria. It's best when poured into a, a cup, so I, I got something here. So, yeah, should I open it? Open it up. Go for it, yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, we're drinking my uh, homemade Wolfsbane bitter. To kick off the Halloween season, we're going to basically talk about our love of horror movies. Because, of yeah. course, we're a horror movie channel, and James is a big horror movie fan. Yeah, and anybody who likes horror movies and beer is a friend of mine. And, and you play music, too, so all good. So the Halloween season has started, and I'm sure we all have our special videos we're planning for the Halloween season. Yeah. We have uh, H2O 25 years later, it's still even worse video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta see that. We have a Halloween 2 watch along, which should be fun. This is gonna be one of them. Uh, James, do you have anything special planned for Halloween? You don't have to spill the beans. Actually, we know you have something special <laughs> planned. But when can we see it? We know it's going to be pretty epic. Do you have like a date planned or anything? I uh, don't know the date, but it, it, but it's definitely October. Uh, I have three things due in October. Uh, one is uh, the, the Angry Video Game Nerd episode, which is insane. This is like one of the biggest videos I've done in a long time. I've gone through a three-hour makeup process in it. <laughs> um, uh, wait till you see. Um, it's kind of like a bucket list thing. Like it's, it's been like sort of a personal goal of mine to do this. So, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait for you to see it. And, uh, the other things I have monster madness. I have, um, a series of videos going on about, um, horror, uh, TV episodes. Well, not necessarily horror, but like more specifically the Halloween episode of a TV show. Yeah. So, and then also I'm, uh, also preparing for a trip uh, to Portland to play uh, in Rex Viper um, on the West Coast for the first time on Friday the 13th. So I have um, all these things going on that I'm preparing for. Triple simultaneous deadlines all happening. So, so a lot of stuff to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you guys like to have, like to put on for the, for the start? The first horror movie of October? Yeah. It varies, but um, uh, this year, though, I watched The Old Dark House again, and I just love that movie. I just can't get enough of it. I, I love re-watching that one every year. That's kind of like one of my essential Halloween, you know, flicks. It's great. It, it actually took me a long time to find that movie. It used to be rare. A couple of years ago on Tubi, it was free, and I finally had a chance to watch it, but it took me forever to find the damn thing. Yeah, it used to have, like, really poor quality. Like, they, they sort of just found, like, some old, like, probably a 16-millimeter print, and um, anytime you'd see it, it would look really deep contrast and, like, grainy. And um, 
and then they sort they started restoring it as time went on and, and now if you look at it, it's like it, it's in like 4k and it, and it looks crystal clear it's great but at the same time i feel like when i started watching it the graininess made it a little more creepy in a way yeah, yeah there's certain movies that for sure benefit from the grainy look mm -hmm. teenage mutant ninja turtles cleaned up for like Blu-ray in 4K, you can yeah, see yeah, like yeah. all the seams of the suits and everything. Like yeah, when they open their mouths too, yeah. you can see the shit yeah. inside. <laughs> Let's start like right from the beginning, like right from the beginning. Yeah. Do any of us have like a very first memory of a horror movie? Like the very first thing. It could be like a picture in a magazine or a movie on the shelf at the rental store. I can go first for this one. If you want I, to. I know this one. Give James a moment to think. <laughs> when I was probably three years old or so, three or four, I had to have been four, about four years old, so it would have been about 1988, my sister rented Evil Dead 2. And at the time, I didn't know it was Evil Dead 2, but I remember one of my very first memories ever is uh, Linda's head in the vice in the work shed. <laughs> You're one of your first memories ever. Yeah, yeah. ever, ever. <laughs> and yeah, it was like him sawing it. I remember being like, that scene is fucking freaky. But I remember like kind of being freaked out, but not overly scared all that much. You know, I still kept watching it. But then I don't remember much more after that. James? Well, you know what? Mine, I think, uh, I mean, they weren't technically horror movies. They were kind of horror comedies. But I remember seeing... Uh, Gremlins at a young age and, and Ghostbusters. So those two um, were kind of like my first horror movies, even though they're like 50 50. Comedy was probably a lot of kids' gateway into horror, I think. Yeah, that, it makes a lot of sense. Um, that being at the right age. Um, and I also, I, I vaguely remember seeing a scene from John Carpenter's The Thing at a young age. And I don't even know how I got my eyes on it, but it was just like one scene and it was. One of these scenes where it, like all shit's going crazy, all the blood and guts is coming out. And, and I remember seeing that and it, I was like traumatized, but I only ca caught like one little glimpse of it. So it's not like it really, you know, stuck. I remember seeing um, Alien, the, the chest burster scene from Alien when I was pretty young. Um, I remember that, that freaking me out. The first uh, memory I have of, of a horror movie, actually I actually don't think is, the, is a movie itself, but my dad had a book about horror movies. It was like the history of horror. Mm -hmm. And the cover was Christopher Lee as Dracula tangled in all the vines from the satanic rites of Dracula at yeah. the end. And that was the cover. And that's like my first ever memory of a horror movie is that cover with Christopher Lee bleeding and tangled in the vines and shit. Yeah, that... With, with his eyes all bloodshot. What a shitty way for Dracula to fucking die. Oh yeah, the, the Hawthorne bush. Are you kidding? He clumsily trips over these vines and then... Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking Dracula! Well, he does get a little bit of a shovel um, as well, uh, for good measure. Since we're on the topic of uh, Dracula Hammer Horror, I know a lot of people are on the fence about Dracula AD. Mm -hmm. A shit sandwich. Like, the, the bread is very good. So, like, you get, like, a very good opening and a very good ending. It's just kind of shitty in the middle. It was also a little bit of a breath of fresh air at the same time because how many times they had done that formula at that point where yeah. it was kind of nice to see him kind of break away from the gothic villages. And yeah, after doing it for that, that many movies, that was like number six. So, yeah, I mean, it's like you got to change it up eventually. True enough. I don't like the... Uh... The running water thing that they introduced, though, like what the? This is a little silly. Too many ways to kill Dracula. Yeah, it's too easy. Yeah. Prince of Darkness. It's like okay, first movie's sunlight, second movie's water. It's like okay, well, sunlight and water, you're you're, you're a failure at that point. <laughs> you can't do anything. Yeah. yeah, you have to be invited as a vampire. You have to be invited into somebody's house. You can't just you know barge in. Um, then if you go really far, there's all those things like. Uh, if you spill rice, they have to count it every last piece. Oh, yeah, they right. the, yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah, vampires suck. <laughs> yeah, kind of, you know, when I, when I was a kid, I thought, what, man, wouldn't it be cool to be a vampire? You're watching movies like Lost Boys and shit, like all these badass vampires. But then yeah. when you really look at it, it's like, man, it must suck. You have to sleep in your own native soil. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at that point, you're just sleeping in your own... Shit. I mean, that's what it is. Soil. When they say you're soiled, it's like he soiled himself. So 
That's <laughs> it fucking stink. I mean, you're going around just covered in dirt. Then, like, he's supposed to. He has this cape. He's supposed to be like this elegant count, and he's sleeping in dirt. Sleeping in yeah. shit, and you got to shower. Like, you got to clean yourself every day. Maybe that's why Dracula was always like this. <laughs> he didn't want to yeah, smell his own like ass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, yeah, you got to love those Hammer Horror films, uh, especially the Dracula. The, well, Dracula and Frankenstein. I love those two series. I think it's safe to say we all got into horror fairly young. I, I think I was fully on board, like, 11, 12. Probably, I, I would say safe to say 12. I was like, that was my universal monster phase. Like, I, that's when it all started for me. What do you think it is about horror movies that kind of got us gripped in at such a young age? Well, you know what it was? First, it was the pictures in the uh, the Ian Thorne books, the... Uh, the, the orange books that, um, actually I have some of them over here, but uh, uh, the, it was uh, by Crestwood House. It was basically like there was one book on Dracula, one on Frankenstein. They were just a, like movie facts and stuff, and they weren't, a lot, lots of times they were inaccurate. Um, but uh, like, you know, the, the front cover of the Wolfman uh, book, it's a picture of, um, I was a teenage werewolf, I think. It's not the Wolfman. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. But, but who cares when you see those pictures, you're like, oh, wow, like, look at that. And you kind of had to invent the movie in your head. And um, it would be a while before I'd, I'd actually find them just lurking in the corners of the video store somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it started with those books. You remember what, what was it about horror that kind of gripped you in? <laughs> got you obsessed? I... I, I think it it was always playing in my household. So like, and that's that's because of my mom. She was like, you know, she had Stephen King books everywhere, and she she was the one who really. There was always a horror movie playing either from TV or from from you know like cable. Of course, back when cable was actually pretty good. <laughs> and then whenever we went to the movie store, there was always it was just straight to the horror section. Well, that's where she always went, so I always just followed behind, and then it was just, you know, you just kind of slowly grew into it. Yeah, you are probably born into it more so. I was so. more kind yeah. of born into yeah. it. It's not really anything that, that snapped for me or anything. It was just yeah. sort of a natural thing. And then when me and Adam met, it, we played off each other with all that kind of shit. So yeah. that just kind of made it skyrocket, yeah. too. It was yeah. like... Yeah, I would say I was born into it, too, because my dad was a big horror movie fan. Like I said, that book, I grew up probably before I even saw a horror movie, flipping through that book and seeing all the pictures of the Hammer films and right. Universal Monster films and stuff like that. So, yeah, again, kind of born into it. But I think it was probably, for me, like more of the horror comedies, kind of like you said, James, like Young Frankenstein and stuff like that really got me into the whole gothic look. Of, yeah. of horror, right? And then when I realized, you know, my, my mom or whoever told me, oh, you know, this is, you know, an offshoot of this movie, then you go back to the beginning and watch the original Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of where it started for me, was like, young Frankenstein to the original Frankenstein, and then up from there. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, when we were kids, like when all of us were kids, we didn't have these, like, shitty remakes either. Yeah, and all the remakes of the 80s were all different, you know, um, like The Fly, The Thing, The Blob, like, all of those had remakes that were just so different than the originals. Um, it, it, it was like there was a purpose to make a remake back then. A, a great remake is, is always a remake of a movie that, you know, almost had it like it the idea was there but you know they couldn't quite pull it off so yep. it's like yeah a remake of something like the thing even though even though the fly is a classic it's still a little goofy with the big head and all that kind of stuff so if you can make that a bit more serious and take this great idea and that's a great remake not just for the sake of cash grab <laughs> yeah exactly we love horror movies but they don't, probably don't scare us do they like James, has there been like a, a horror movie that's actually frightened you or scared you? Or would it be a different genre horror a movie that would actually get to you? Yeah, like not usually, but uh, Hereditary was like the first movie that gave me an, like a nightmare in 30 years or something. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, it really freaked me out. I, and I enjoyed it. I was like, oh my God, give me more of that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like... I mean, because usually it's like, like no, like you don't really get scared for real. It's it's just, uh, you know, you're you're watching it more for the, uh, the, the entertainment value and the the art of it, and you know maybe some cheap laughs or something. But like, uh, 
every now and then there's something that comes along that's just legitimately just it just fucks with your your psych. <laughs> and for you, it was hereditary. I think so. I mean, that, off the top of my head, that one really like um, that one really bothered me. And I mean, there were some other ones I thought were cre- like it follows. I mean, it didn't really scare me, but it was it was definitely like a creepy concept. And I know a lot of people shit on that movie, but I, I, I didn't. I didn't like. Oh, really? It. I didn't mind it. I I, I kind of liked it. I, I liked yeah, yeah. I liked Hereditary though, but I don't think you liked Hereditary. I didn't. I didn't. Overall, I didn't like it, but I liked parts of it. As far as collecting horror movies go, um, I know we were big into it as kids. You know, you'd, you'd hop on your bike yeah. on a Saturday afternoon or whatever and bike to wherever the flea market and go hunting for fucking VHS horror. <laughs> yeah. uh, what kind of stuff did you start collecting? or what, When did you start collecting? Well, it was definitely uh, the, uh, the VHS tapes and, and mainly like Universal Monsters, but other stuff too. Uh, Hammer Horror video store, uh, not a rental store, but like a store store uh, called uh, Suncoast, and um, it was in the mall. And I remember that's where I bought a lot of those tapes. But it was very slow. It was a very slow process, you know. Like every time you'd have like 15 bucks to spend, you know, you'd come back and you get another one. Like they were expensive. Yeah, they were expensive. Yeah. Back then, yeah. The used VHS was 12 bucks yeah let alone a fucking new one right so yeah and that was cheap like we both got some wicked movies like i got um the original release of my bloody valentine i got that at the flea market the same one you had but you lost it the uh, return of the living dead i didn't lose it i gave it away like a fucking (laughs) asshole you were more into collecting the universal stuff that was kind of like your you the collection you wanted or needed to complete yeah, yeah, there was that. There was Godzilla. Um, it was it was all that kind of stuff. Because, yeah, the Universal collection. I remember they didn't really they didn't put them all out. Like like Old Dark House, for example, that wasn't one of them. The silent ones they never did. Like Phantom of the Opera or uh, or Hunchback and Notre Dame. I think if it was anything that was public domain, Universal didn't want to release it themselves. They just didn't give a shit. I love the Universal horror movies, but I don't think we, we didn't seek them out to collect them so much. We were more oh. into, I think, the, the slasher series, you know, got to get all your Halloweens, you got to get yeah. all your Friday the 13th, you got to get all your Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amityville yeah. Horror was... Yeah. Right after the classics, then I kind of went to, like, Night Living Dead. That was, like, my bridge. And then then went into all the slashers and stuff. Um, and a lot of that was uh, when Joe Bob started hosting uh, Monster Vision. We never had Joe Bob yeah, where we, we are. We never grew up with Joe Bob, probably oh. just because, you know, cable television or whatever in Canada here, we just didn't get that station. Yeah. Only know about Joe Bob because of you. I don't think I would yeah. even know about Joe Bob if it wasn't for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What kind of movies would he play on his show back when he had the, the oh. cable show? Well, um, well, I remember he did all the Friday the 13th movies. Um, except at the time four because the 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 the, um, the network didn't have the rights to four, and he made it loud and clear like he uh, he he, co- he complained about it, and he'd always complain about them cutting out some of the uh, the gore and the nudity for for TV, and he would like talk about a scene that you didn't see and be like, well, you didn't see that thanks to TNT censors. <laughs> so it was just would, it was so funny like it you know. Because never before had I seen anybody like that who was just like, you know, being honest. Um, but uh, that that was my first experience with the Friday the 13th movies. And then eventually I did see them uncut. Um, and you know what? The cuts were, from what I remember, it was something like, you know, when the first movie, when the arrow goes through Kevin Bacon's throat, um, it, they like cut it out by like a few seconds or something. Like it wasn't really like a lot. But it did make a difference when you'd eventually see the whole movie um, without any of the, uh, you know, the the modifications. Or for the 13th movies, man, because they were cut to hell before they were even released in theaters. Mm-hmm. And then they are cut to hell to watch on TV. Like, it was poor movies. I feel <laughs> yeah. so bad for the effects people that worked on those later ones because all their hard work was just left on the cutting room floor. Yeah, yeah, he, he says that too. He talks about Tom Savini and he's like, you know, he's like, it, the, the fact is, the better job that he did as an effects artist, the more they would cut it. Well, maybe if he yeah. was more of a shitty artist, maybe they would have liked it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
That's funny, yeah, it just shows how good he really is. My mom was the censor. She always introduced the horror movies and had the movies on and stuff like that. But as soon as there was a little bit of nudity or whatever, she'd shut it off or she'd fast forward it. Or yeah. if we were recording, like a lot of times we, we would record the movie and then she'd pause it and let the scene play on and then press record again. Speaking of that, that's kind of an interesting topic is like the, the parenting with horror movies. <laughs> like, uh, when, we, when me and Justin were kids, like, man, we pretty much were able to watch almost anything. There was the odd movie. Like, we rented um, Andy Warhol's Dracula. Oh, yeah. And when my mom noticed there was uh, <laughs> pretty much a softcore porn, she's like, ah, oh, she shut it off. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... <laughs> You know, we were pretty, you know, we were able to watch almost anything, but how about you, James? Or like, were your folks pretty much like, go, go have at her, or were they kind of restrictive? Yeah, well, it was so gradual, I think it, it, it kind of, it just naturally, um, you know, I was able to watch stuff. I think really, I, I kind of was just watching it at the appropriate age, I think, when you're normally supposed to. I mean, I guess <laughs> yeah. I was like... 15 watching R-rated movies, but but still, like it's like by the time you're 17, it's that's only two years away, so it didn't really matter much. But I think it was just that it was so gradual that um, I think they were more concerned about it giving me nightmares and stuff like that when I was really young. But then as I got older, when I started watching uh, the Halloween movies, I remember like. The, the the gore wasn't really a pro there wasn't really like a, like a ton of gore and, and there wasn't really like a ton of nudity either but whenever there was like you know a sex scene it would become very awkward like oh geez I hope nobody walks in right now yeah, like, yeah, what the yeah, hell yeah. am I watching you know yeah it would just become like oh those those were what I was like you know worried about um, because you didn't you didn't see anything like that you would just kind of like pop in a movie and you don't know what's gonna happen. And you're just you're just sitting there and you're just like, like oh shit, should I lock the door? Like what's going on? Like, you know, am I allowed to watch this? You know, because my friends and I we'd pass tapes around. Like sometimes we would um we would rent movies from the video store, and if you had two VCRs, you'd copy it, and then you'd lend it to a friend. And like you know, it's the same with like you know music with audio cassettes back in the day. Back to collecting. You got quite the collection. We have an okay collection, probably compared <laughs> to you. But any anything you're still missing, like from your horror collection, that you're like, man, I still don't have this. It's like a holy grail that yeah, you need to have in your collection that you haven't found yet. You talk about like rare tapes, like a, you know that movie yeah. uh, Tales from the Quad Dead Zone. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to. I, I think like last I heard that VHS tape, it's like like a thousand bucks or something. It's crazy, yeah. One of my ho holy grails is just s more silly stuff, like, you know, like the, the Dead Pit VHS with the, you know, the 3D art, yeah, or Frankenhooker talking VHS stuff like that, like cool stuff yeah. like that. There's a talking Frankenhooker VHS. Yeah, yeah. I think you press a button and it's like, do you are you looking for a good time? Yeah, you want a date? You want a date? Yeah, I think it says you want a date. Yeah. That's a movie right there. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Frankenhooker is a fucking, I think it's like a B movie masterpiece. It's so <laughs> yeah. good and it has no right to be that good. But it's, well, Frank yeah. Hennenlauter, man, he's, you know, he's yep. schlock master. Bill Murray said it's the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> well, you can't argue with Bill Murray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got to be right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what other movie has exploding crack? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exploding hookers, yeah. Yeah, you see the the POV shot of the legs yeah. going into like the lab. Yeah, yeah. And everything? like all the mannequins just <laughs> blowing up. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Justin? What's your holy grail VHS tape? You uh, still you still need in your collection? There was a guy on Marketplace maybe last year that was that had Hide and Go Shriek. Oh, that'd be a good one to have, yeah. And he was only asking five bucks for it, and I've been looking for that movie forever. I love that fucking movie. And then I contacted him, he's like, I wanted three out of, three movies that he had, and he had two, and he said, sorry, Hide and Go Shriek is sold. Yeah. It's and like, for, and oh, for five bucks, And yeah. for five bucks. When did you start having, like, horror influence in your creative output? Did you like, were you like us and made horror movies in the basement as kids? <laughs> or did that kind of come later when you started the, the nerd stuff? I think the earliest really uh, that I can think of where any kind of horror movie um, influenced me, I, it was King Kong. 
uh, which is more of a, you know, fantasy adventure film, but uh, um, I would do all these little, like, puppet movies with puppets and action figures, and I, it was basically like a remake of King Kong, and I did it more than once, actually. Um, sometimes I would use Ninja Turtle figures, whatever I had around. Yeah, yeah, So, but it was basically like the plot of King Kong, because they go to an island and stuff happens, which really, I mean, there's so many movies that ripped off that, that same concept, so... It was really, I mean, it became like a genre after a while. And how old do you think you were at that point? Oh, that that was like 11 or 12, maybe. The same age yeah. as us when yeah. we started doing little shorts and stuff like that, and like his grandma's basement and my, <laughs> my parents' basement and stuff like that. We'd do Ghostbusters and Evil Dead and yeah, shit, yeah, you know, like and stuff like zombie that. Zombie movies and shit like that. But we were lucky we had each other. Did, mm -hmm. did you have someone that you made movies with in the basement, or was it just all you and your toys? I did, yeah. My friends in the neighborhood would always, uh, you know, they, they just accepted this weird hobby that I had, and they would come over, and we would make movies with them. But, you know, sometimes if it was just me, then I would do, I would do the puppets and action figures. But when whenever uh, friends were around, I would use them. I would make them act and everything. And uh, Do you remember the names of these silly movies you'd make? Oh yeah, I mean, well, I mean, Spirit. It was just called Spirit. It was like a Ghostbusters ripoff, basically. Um, <laughs> the King Kong movie that was a Escape from Monster Island. That was the one with the puppets and everything. Uh, there was also Return to Monster Island. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah you of need course. to return. Yeah. <laughs> Snicks. That that was um, the, the the series that I made when I was young. Uh, yeah, Snicks. I mean, basically, it, it was sort of a little bit of a slasher because it involved like a masked character but this mask was what possessed the person it was like the mask belonged to this ancient demon warlock named Snix you put the mask on you become Snix which is another kind of you know trope and horror you know the, the possession aspect um, so yeah there was all that kind of stuff well we made a, um, a horror movie for a, a project in junior <laughs> high yeah which I'm surprised that they, 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 they played it too like it was some sort of open house in the junior high where parents could walk through and they had our little horror movie playing on a TV outside we're all we're cursing yeah, we're all swearing and everything and I remember watching the teacher because we, we remember we screened it for the class first yeah and like there was a bunch of parts where we're like son of a bitch sons of bitches yeah Christ you assholes sorry skip on that god damn all this stuff and the teacher was like <laughs> you could see on her face just uh, uh, but she never stopped it which no, was yeah. and she never said anything yeah, to us yeah. either actually she just let it, let it go I know when we made movies in the basement you know there was there was some destruction to the house sometimes <laughs> so, Holes in the walls, <laughs> broken chairs. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hurt again. Neighborhood kids that we got involved, they got hurt and started crying. Did you yep. encounter any of that? You know, did you end up wrecking shit and accidentally <laughs> hurting your friends <laughs> making these movies like we did? No, I remember one time we had to take my sister to the hospital after one. <laughs> it was a uh, that was from a uh, battle at the bloodbath, which was never finished. <laughs> <laughs> Ne like never finished yeah. Yeah. yeah that was it that was like the scene that ended the movie because like it was like a supposed to be like a it was the shitty martial arts fight me and my sister neither one of us have any idea of like you know stage combat or anything like that so um she's just like goes to kick me and i'm supposed to like block it and when she goes to kick me she like sprained her ankle when she kicked me and um yeah yeah so that 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 was the end of that and yeah, I had to take her to the hospital to explain what happened. And it's like, well, it's, yeah, it's like, well, it's on video, so. <laughs> yeah, you can't explain it away. Yeah. Like, yeah. here it is. Yeah, we're like in costumes and stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're lucky. We never sent anyone to the hospital, I don't think. No, but we did get in trouble a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, like, there's one video that, uh, what was that, that Evil Dead thing that we made where, like, we're all throwing our, each other around, throwing our friends around and everything. You'd hear all this shit breaking, and then you could hear my dad from upstairs, What are you guys doing down there? <laughs> he was all mad. And then after when they left, man, I got it. Like, 
I got in shit, like, that's enough of that shit crap! It's enough of that crap that you guys are doing down there! It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Three desert island horror movies that we can't live without. Oh, yeah. Oh, you that's... need these horror movies if you're going to a desert island, if that's all you got. Do you want me to go first? If you, know, go if you know. I kinda, I could probably, I could probably sort of... Okay, so I think the first one for me would be the... 78 Dawn of the Dead. Mm -hmm. I think that's a must. Yeah, it's a great one. The Thing. Which uh, Thing? The, the 82. Okay. Halloween. I think Halloween. So Halloween, Dawn of the Dead, and The Thing. Yeah, yeah. 78, uh, 1978 was a good year for horror. Yeah. yeah. James, you know, do you know your three? Yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking at like um, one of my old lists right now. but. <laughs> I think I'm gonna I'm gonna say Night of Living Dead first of all. It's just like kind of, you know. Which one? Uh, oh, the oh the original. Uh, it was an, it, yeah, it was just uh, independent, and it was just uh, you know it has that low budget feel to it, and it's it's black and white, so it's it's classic, but it's also kind of modern at the same time. Because if I say like okay, if I pick something universal horror, then it's like well, which one? <laughs> There's so many. Um, you know, I mean, you know, I'm just gonna say Frankenstein meets the Wolfman because that's really like the first like monster mash, the first like crossover. Um, I hate so I how that, that movie ends. Well, they all end the same way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it ends so abruptly. They though. all end like, abruptly. God damn. Oh, they do. They do all end abrupt. Uh, you know, a movie has a really funny ending. Um, uh, Frankenstein created woman because the last scene, she just jumps off like a, a cliff and then. Frankenstein just walks away like oh well and then the credits just roll like immediately <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't waste any time at all so I, I think I probably have to pick a hammer since we're talking about it um man that's tough though that's really tough you know what how about horror Dracula there you go oh that's a good one yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's yeah. your three your three horror movies you can't live without for now yeah that's <laughs> it. <laughs> three, eh? yeah 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 Man, I don't know. That's tough. I think I'm with Justin with Dawn of the Dead, 78. I think that would be one of my Desert Island horror movies. Probably Return of the Living Dead too. I, I was gonna say that. That's... Just because it's so fucking fun and talk about rewatchability. If yeah. you're on a desert island and you only had a couple of movies to rewatch, well, it's got to be rewatchable. Yeah. Did you mean uh, Return of the Living Dead also or Return of the Living Dead? Two. No, also, <laughs> not two. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's got an awesome poster, but the movie, nah. Oh, It's funny, too, because that book that Adam bought me a book on that, uh, on the whole series, and it touches on number two, and, like, the director, they got about halfway through the movie, and the director was like, this movie's shit. Like, he knew it was shit. And then so that's where they get, that's where you get the uh, Michael Jackson zombie at the end. Yeah. Because the guys were actually pushing him for that for the whole movie. And he was always like, no, this is a serious movie. No. And then after, he was just like, this movie's garbage. Do whatever you guys want. Yeah. And then that's... <laughs> that seems to be the case for a lot of directors that are pressured by producers yeah. and shit. But anyway, sorry, okay, so you got one more to go. One more to go, man, fuck. Okay, so Dawn of the Dead, Return of the Living Dead. Okay, you gotta, gotta get away from the zombies here. That's a good um, run, though, right there. You know, I might have to choose, uh, as much as I love Halloween, it'll have to be a Carpenter flick, and I'm gonna have to say Christine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I love Christine. That's a movie I can watch over and over again, so mm -hmm. th those might be my three, just off the top of my head. Oh, you know, Evil Dead 2 has got to be up there somewhere. Oh, I yeah, know. Again, like, talk about rewatchability, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a movie you watch, and it's over, and it's like, it feels like it's been half an hour. Yeah. It's just so <laughs> fucking fast paced. Yeah. It's so quick. Yeah. I just watched that last week, actually. Evil Dead 2, it, it like, it, it left such a big impression on me considering how late I saw it, because I was like in my 20s at that time. By then, I had seen um, all the, uh, you know, Nightmare on Elm Streets and the Friday the 13th and everything. I feel like I've seen every like major horror movie that there was. So uh, at that point, um, nothing was really like impressing me anymore. Um, I saw the first Evil Dead and, and I, I liked it, but I wasn't like, you know, blown away or anything. 
And I, I didn't bother to see the second one for the longest time because I just figured, well, sequels are never as good as the, the first one. So, um, you know, but then eventually I gave Evil Dead 2 a try and I was just like, holy shit. Like this, I, I've never seen comedy and horror done like this together like so well because there's really not a lot of movies like that and, and i think the second movie is what really gave the evil dead franchise its identity and then yeah and after that i, I was like man i want to make movies like that i want to make like these crazy zombie films like i it really like got me fired up um so i think that was really like the last time when something when i would i would say a horror film changed my life it was that that movie I remember before Army of Darkness came out when, I'm pretty sure we watched it together, Evil Dead 2, and that part where, you know, at the end where he goes back in time and all that, oh, I hope there's a fucking sequel. And this was when pay-per-view was a big thing. Yeah. And I remember being in the living room and, ha and the TV was on and playing or whatever, and I saw the fucking trailer on pay-per-view for Army of Darkness, and I was like, Holy shit! They did it's it. Like, yeah, it's like they did. That's the same. See, I didn't. But at the time, I didn't fully know that it was a sequel to Evil Dead because it was a different title. Yeah. But it was the same guy, right? Yeah. It was Bruce Campbell. But I was like, that's gotta be. That has to be a sequel. I was like, and even so, it still looks awesome, anyways. Yeah. It's like, fuck, this is, you know, blown wow. away. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I haven't heard from from anybody who's seen it. Like when, uh, you know. Like, because by the time I heard of those movies, they were all, you know, out and for like a, a while. So that's really cool to hear, like, um, having that suspense with, with that cliffhanger, you know. Yeah, yeah because they had to have done something. You can't, you know, end Evil Dead 2 the way they ended it and not do something with that. You <laughs> yeah. have to do something with that ending, that's, you know? Yeah. The best days of horror might be behind us, maybe. <laughs> Um, judged by some of the output we've seen lately. Yeah. But anything uh, that's happened in the last, you know, decade or so. Decade. Like any movie that's really kind of like, oh, okay, that's, that's a classic. That's a classic horror movie. Yeah, Hereditary, that, that was a good recent one. And you can't use the same answer twice. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, Get Out, um, Us, like those Jordan Peele movies, uh, Don't Breathe was really good. Yeah, that. there's been some classics in the last couple of years, yeah. But yeah, I think they're, 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 they're more spread out. They're not as you yeah, know, plentiful yeah. as they once were. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like you're going to have like, uh, you know, a year where it's going to be like, oh, there's this movie, then there's that movie. Yeah, I feel it, it is spread out, yeah. Uh, X and Pearl, I really liked. And a lot of the Asian stuff, too, like, you know, Train to Busan, I think, is a classic. It's a great classic zombie film. Yeah, that was pretty um, good. Parasite was amazing. The sadness was pretty crazy, too. So a lot, a lot of the Asian stuff, I think, is better than a lot of the North American output at this point. Right. Yeah, I gotta see more of that. Yeah, see, I'm. That's a hard question for me to answer because I don't. <laughs> I've been burned so many fucking times with new movies that most of the time I refuse to watch new movies. <laughs> that's just the way it is for me. It's like it's. It, I I know it's a stupid thing. Like it's you know I'm kind of burying my head in the sand and all that type yeah. of stuff. But I just can't. It's just so hard for me to. Well, you know. A new movie comes out, it's like, oh, a new horror movie. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah, yeah. so jaded. Yeah. And that's what it is. I'm so fucking jaded. You gotta listen now, to Quato. <laughs> Open your mind. <laughs> that's too high canned. <laughs> oh, no, that's something I saw as a kid. I, uh, total recall. <laughs> the free to up, probably Quato. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, that, that, it comes out of the, the, the stomach. Like that. The, well, the whole scenery pulls that oh, fucking the... thing out of his nose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Total recall. And for some reason, I think that if any other actor had to portray that, it wouldn't have been as terrifying as as arnold because like the way he does it and like something about it it's just like it, it just really bothered me because he's like because when he acts that scene he's really like ah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i'm like fuck like you feel it and you see it like it's all the light and everything coming from yeah. way up here like it's gonna yeah. pass down there yeah. oh, and when he's on mars and like his eyes are bugging out in like the oh, yeah. the dream, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, Total Recall is fucking terrifying. I wonder if they just yeah. used that same dummy head from Terminator <laughs> just for. <laughs> 
Are there any movies that both you guys like new movies that are coming out or that you've seen recently that you're excited about? Any horror, any new release horror movies that, you know, no. you can get pumped about? I'm not pumped about anything in the pipe except for the third movie in the X series, which is Maxine. I'm super excited for. But besides that, you know, we're going to go see Exorcist Believer to yeah. review it, but I'm not excited to see it. I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm excited, yeah. you know. Yeah, let me know how it is. <laughs> um, we will. <laughs> but, besides, yeah, but besides Maxine, that's the only thing I'm excited for. James, anything that you're looking forward to seeing in the future that you know is on its way? Uh, horror related. Um, off the top of my head, I don't really know any. Um, I, I do know that there's a Five Nights at Freddy's movie coming out, which I am kind of curious about. I wouldn't say I'm like psyched about it, but I'm I'm definitely interested. So I, I think I'm gonna try to check that out. Yeah. Justin, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any sequels to horror franchises that you'd want to see made, or like a any kind of reboot, or like like a new installment to something existing? Or, I don't know. I've got. I've, I'd love to see. You know, the Collector. Have you seen the Collector, James? No. Oh no, you haven't seen all. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see. There's there was a sequel to that, and there's been a third one. Kind of there used to be talks about it in the yeah. works, and then it kind of died out. I'd love to see where they could take that. Yeah. Yeah. A cool. Sequel to a movie. I know you're talking about Doctor Giggles. Sequel but but, to you know, <laughs> but Larry Drake's dead though, uh, so yeah. it, you can't do a Doctor a Doctor Giggles sequel would have been great, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um no, I don't want to see any more fucking sequels. You know, I'm sequeled out. I'm rebooted out. Give me yeah. something. Give me something new. Yeah. You know, give me something yeah. new, please. Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to see another versus movie because they're just so rare to to come by. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I don't know, like uh, uh, Leatherface versus Michael Myers or something like that. Like it's just, it's a shame that you don't see that kind of thing more often. Because I, I mean. It, Crazy to think Freddy vs. Jason's 20 years old now. Um, that movie, I remember, like, it blew my mind when I, when I, when I saw it because you you just didn't see that those things happen. And you still don't. And it made a lot of money, too, so you're surprisingly no more got made considering yeah. how much money yeah. that fucking movie made. Yeah. That was interesting, too. They tease you at the end of Jason Goes to Hell because... Yeah. Freddy's yeah, glove comes yeah, up, and yeah. I remember seeing that too on pay per view again. I remember yeah. seeing that, and I was like, "Holy fuck! They're gonna, they're they're gonna have a battle. They're gonna do something in hell or whatever." And yeah. then it took years, <laughs> years, you know. Yeah. And then it sort of became like legendary. Like you, they talk about it. Like this movie had like this myth status. Like, oh yeah, there's gonna be a Freddy versus Jason. Like, no, there's not gonna be a Freddy versus Jason. They're not gonna do that. And then they did, and it and it just like it delivered. And and that's it, no more, <laughs> nothing else like that. There's a lot of mixed reviews on that movie. I like it. I think it's fun because it's supposed to be fun and silly. You know? Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. not a fucking yeah. serious yeah. movie. Yeah. What do you, what do you expect? Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about when it came out. Like, I haven't seen it in a very long time, but uh, when it came out, it did the job. I mean, I'll also say like I I liked H2O when it came out, but after rewatching it, it doesn't really hold up. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not in the least. You got me a book. The unmade Halloween sequels called Taking Shape Part 2, which is a very interesting book. It's all about the Halloween movies that never got made. You know, they, yeah. they went to kind of pre-production maybe, and then it got scrapped and whatever. But because um, Freddy vs. Jason was so successful, and Miramax, I think at the time, had Halloween, and they had the Hellraiser franchise... There were several Michael Myers versus Pinhead scripts floating <laughs> wow. around, but it's like they just couldn't like because they're so they're totally different. different, right? They're like yeah. in different, completely different worlds. Well, then again, at the same time, uh, you know, Jason and and Freddy are, are very different too. Like a, a lot of people kind of before that came out was like, how that how is that going to work? Because Freddy is like in a dream and he's like, you know, he can do almost anything. It wouldn't be a fair fight. It doesn't make sense. But they made it make sense as much as they could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They did make yeah. it work, you know, to their benefit. They made it work the best they could. Is there anything kind of fun that you have planned for Halloween evening? Or are you just going to chill out? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, uh, trick or treat with the kids. 
and then probably when everything's all settled i mean probably gonna like try to watch like one of these movies that we may have already talked about it might be halloween it might be some one of the go-to oh you know what you know it's a go-to is a trick or treat actually that that movie's it's good yeah that movie just it's fun yeah I'm going to be decorating the house and handing out candy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm probably going to take my little one out for trick-or-treating. And then yeah. when I get home, when she's, whatever, will spill her all her candy on the floor. She can go through it. I'll put Halloween 3 on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on, James. I hope you had an okay time. We did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, no problem. And uh, until next time, keep drinking. Yeah. None of that rolling rock shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, take care, James. All right, see ya. And we'd like to give a big shout out to our friend Mark Miller, who actually got all this together. Yeah, yeah. Posted it on StreamYard. We've never been able to do it without you. And he also did the guitar solo for our Trash or Treasure theme. That's right, which is fucking awesome. Yeah. So if you want to check that out, he's got his own YouTube channel. All of his music is on there for Corrupter. The link will be in the description. So check him out. And until next time, keep drinking.